Good evening everyone, today we'll be taking a look at an absolutely crucial player in the world of Terraria, one who is sworn to defend the world at any cost and that includes her entire species. She's been around for a very long time, is an integral part in the existence of nature around her and doesn't really like being hit on by gun runners. Yes, it's the Dryad. The Dryad is known to be a whopping 500 years old, the oldest confirmed age of any of Terraria's citizens, although she still appears to be relatively youthful and is the last member of her species, the others having perished in a cataclysmic battle with Cthulhu a long time ago. She appears to wear only natural vine coverings, however it's suggested on good authority that these are actually part of her body, indicating that she may be, at least partly, floral based. She can be known by a variety of names, most of which sound exotic and evoke a sense of her connection to nature. These can include, amongst others, Celestia, Evie, Allura and Xylia, although she is more commonly referred to simply as the Dryad. Compared to most other individuals in Terraria, a relatively large amount is actually known about the Dryad's past exploits, which is surprising given her advanced age. For instance, we know that she was involved in a war between her race and the Great Old One Cthulhu when he came to Terraria. During this war, her people managed to tear the Eldritch God apart in an effort to stop him, but this only resulted in them being completely wiped out, leaving the Dryad we know as the lone survivor. Even after this, Cthulhu's eye, brain, spine, skeleton and flesh continue to live on, further terrorising the world as their own entity. Therefore, the Dryad seems to have made it her mission to finish what her people started and destroy the nightmarish creatures once and for all. Unfortunately, she seems incapable of achieving this herself, thus why she appears to seek out the great champion and encourage them to purify the world. Other exploits the Dryad has been known to be involved in include the Old One's Army incident, where another universe broke through into Terraria and she was tossed into the world of Etheria, where she fought to prevent that dimension's creatures overrunning her own. While here, the Dryad's connection to Terraria was weakened and the corruption that lay dormant within her until now manifested as her dark form. Fortunately, she was able to control this side of her, utilising it to enhance her powers until she managed to return home. Once her ultimate objective of destroying the remnants of the old gods is complete, she tasks herself with bringing purity back to the whole of Terraria, primarily through continued insistences to the champion about the state of the world. While there are some significant similarities between accepted tales and legends, there are also huge discrepancies and large details that legends consider that reputed stories do not. While both sets of history state that the Dryads fought the cosmic horrors and were wiped out as a result, legends state that it was not actually them who defeated Cthulhu, rather the guide in the time when he was still able to fight. The stories go on to tell that the Dryads were actually a race of nymphs and that the term Dryad was simply a title bestowed upon the leader of their kind. In the final days of their people, it is said that the last survivors pulled their power into this leader, who would go into exile in the jungle, while any other survivors became the feral nymphs, posing as lost girls in the subterranean caverns. In this exile, the Dryad would become enraged at what had happened to her people, and turn the jungle into a natural fortress, in the process creating Plantera as a means of revenge. Coming to see the error of her ways, she would actually make Plantera a guardian of Jungle Temple rather than a weapon, and in old age pass her life essence onto a select feral nymph who would be redeemed as the next Dryad. This process would continue for ages as the subsequent Dryads search for a way to purify the world until the one known to the champion emerges. Despite its complexity, the legend's history is, of course, still fragmented and highly interpretive, which means that it's very unreliable and should not be trusted as truth. The Dryad is effectively a physical manifestation of Terraria itself, meaning she could be considered to be as powerful as the world around her, with whatever damages nature harming her and whatever heals it, in turn, restoring her. This could appear as the Dryad being a solely self-serving entity, but given that her body appears as fragile as any other mortal, apparently replaced upon death, it might be that she is more of an extension of Terraria, rather than a being merely connected to it. It can also be thought that she has an extreme level of power that is seldom seen, as she may have chosen the path of pacifism. But given the amount of strength she may be capable of wielding, as well as her long and complex history, the Dryad has been given a notoriety of high. So, effectively a demigod made of vines, who is potentially capable of wielding the power of an entire planet. Not quite the nature-loving hippie we all thought her to be then. I mean, all this considered, I'd really hate to get on her bad side, so I guess we'd better do what she says and get to purifying the world. Please subscribe for more course content and become a patron or channel member to give that extra little bit of support and get early access to these lectures, as well as a vote on what we cover next. Now, please go, have a lovely week, and I will see you next time.